But uh, we should be live now. Back out so you can actually see the title screen. Creepy as it is. So yeah, today we're going to take a dive into one of my ch childhood games, which I think explains a lot about me. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. It's one of the two I would say I think is the best Zelda games, at least of the ones I have played. I have not actually played some of the ones people really think are the best, so I can't weigh in on these, but this is one of the best ones that I have personally played. It usually gets tied with Ocarina of Time and they kind of take over each other depending on what I feel like. He actually is tiny. He is only, um, Majora's Mask deals with Child Link. He is, uh, slightly older than he is in Ocarina of Time. But, uh, not by much. Also, the music sounds kind of soft, so let me know if you can't hear it clearly. Yeah, this is, uh, actually a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time. Um, I thought about playing Ocarina of Time first. And I am going to play Ocarina of Time at some point, because it's a really good game and I love it. I just really wanted to play this game. <laughs> uh, as for actually what the game will actually be is, I've not quite decided. Um, I want to get all of the masks, because there is actually a very special mask in one of my favorites that I want to show off uh, at the ending of the game. But you have to actually have every single mask in the game to be able to, to get that one thing. Um, I do not think I will be 100%ing it besides that, because there's a lot of other stuff you can do. And 100%ing is just a pain in the particular, <laughs> essentially. So, uh... Don't really have any desire to do that. I might end up needing help with the guide to get some of the masks because some of the masks are actually really confusing to get. And there is one mask that is very, very fiddly to get. As in, if you mess up one thing, you have to completely reset your current cycle. And I did say cycle. Um, I'll explain that a little bit later. I usually name him Link because uh, that will show up, but I'll just go ahead and put my name in for once. It'll be fun. But yeah, I will explain things like the cycles a little later uh, when it comes up. But just suffice to say that the masks are not easy to get all of them, but I'm going to try my best. Also, Hun, if you thought the title screen was going to keep you from sleeping tonight, you've not seen nothing yet. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. A legend held dearly by the royal family that tells of a boy. A boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that had made him a legend. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey. A secret and personal journey. Oh, it's gonna make you cry! <laughs> a journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. Wait till you see the first cycle! You're gonna cry in the first cycle! You're gonna cry in the first 20 minutes! A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. So basically the plot of this game is Navi went, went away somewhere and we're trying to figure out where she went because she don't know where she we don't know where she is. I actually like the fairies in this game a lot. Um the one you get is kind of a twit at first. She's quite rude, but she's actually not that bad. Um, and I don't know if it was because Ocarina of Time isn't as bad as we all like to joke, or if they actually fixed it, but uh, she's actually nowhere near as annoying as Navi was in Ocarina of Time. She doesn't pop up quite as much. 
But I think part of that has to do with the cycle system, which, uh, we'll, again, we'll get into. Yeah, the fairies' names are... Tattle and Tail. Also, this is a Skull Kid. Yeah, like, we all love to joke that Navi was a pain in the butt, but she really was only a pain when you were trying to go, like, explore and find all the things you could find. That was really the only time she was actually annoying. Because, like, I remember I was trying to figure out where to get a heart, a heart piece, and it was taking me, like, half an hour to find, and she kept chiming up with, You have to go here! And I kind of wanted to punch her. Also, this is Skull Kid. He's just kind of punching us, or kicking us in the face. And then he looted us. Oh, we need that back! <laughs> that is, in fact, the Ocarina of Time from uh, the titular game. If you don't remember why it's important, just trust me when I say it's important. So yeah, the purple fairy is Tael. And his sister, the white fairy, is uh, Tattle. Try to guess, try to figure out what their name makes. I <laughs> love Link's face here. He's just so unamused. Yep, Tattletail. Give it back! Hey, that's our horse! Get off her! I don't think this is the best idea, Link. What are you even holding on to? <laughs> Opponent doesn't have a saddle. I, I think this is actually fixed in the 3DS in the 3DS version, um, and Epona is in fact given a saddle in that version. Um, the thing about Majora's Mask is it was made in an insanely tiny amount of time. So they basically just straight lifted nearly every single model from Ocarina of Time. Which I think is why Epona doesn't have a saddle. Because uh, she didn't have a saddle when she was young in Ocarina of Time. So we can move here. This lets us roll. B uses our sword like usual. I, can we spin the attack yet? I don't think we can rotate the thing to spin yet. Yeah, we don't have any of Link's old stuff from uh, from the original game. See, I can pause. You can see we don't actually have anything at all. I don't know if Link just dumped it or if Skull Kid robbed it as well. I'm going to be a little awkward while trying to relearn it, because I have not played this game in ages. <laughs> but yeah, if you're going to talk about not sleeping tonight, you're about to see what's really going to keep you from not sleeping tonight. Because <laughs> I guarantee you, it's not going to be the mask or the moon. <laughs> That's actually one reason why uh, people usually play Ocarina of Time before this game, is because it is such... It is a sequel, and this game is a different area, but uses all the same models. It has a very sort of bizarro dimension feeling to it. Also, Skull Kid got floodlights from somewhere in, Hy in uh, Hyrule. That's interesting. What'd you do to Epona? You better not have, or I swear I'll take it out of your hide. And here comes the nightmares. <laughs> so, uh, I'd brace yourself. Actually, I don't remember if this first one is as bad as the rest. But we will find out. Also, no, this isn't like the emulator messing up. This part of the game is just really this, uh, blurry. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. That one's not quite as, uh, horrifying as the other ones are gonna be.
We've been transformed! Uh oh! And Tattles being a jerk and smacking us. And they're gone. Don't laugh, that means she's we're stuck with her. <laughs> yeah, Tattle is gonna be very bad at first, I will warn you right now, but she gets a lot better. And you're about as helpless as a shark. So we are now Deku Link. Our sword is actually replaced with a spin attack like this. And there's a couple of other things we can do. Also, these bushes are alive, and I'm not really sure why. They just kind of are. We also look oddly horrifying. Yeah, the chimes the fairies make in this game are actually quite pleasant, which I think is one of the one of the reasons that uh, isn't quite as bad. Yeah, Deco Link's this weird mix of kind of adorable and kind of horrifying. I kind of give her a pass on being impatient because she's deeply worried about her little brother. <laughs> it's just the like the eyes that kind of unsettle me. One sec, let me mute. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I just they let me know that they're taking the the dog to the the doctor, make sure she's okay. Yeah, so the thing about Deku Link is he has a special, uh... Oh dear. Uh... My camera stick isn't working. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Anyways, the thing about Deku Link is he's got a special ability. So he can actually go into these flowers. And when you pop out, he can fly for a short time. Eventually he'll run out of flight like that, or you can drop him early. So the thing about Deku Link is you want to very carefully manage, uh manage where you're going. See, I can drop him early like that. Luckily, if he, if he hits a... If he hits a, um, a platform that is knee height or lower, he will just step up onto the platform, I believe is how that works. I think I actually need to go back down to get the uh, time to do this. Also, you can see his shadow on the ground if you're watching very carefully. So it makes it uh, a lot easier to uh, arrange where you're actually going. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Oh, just barely. Good boy, Link. And this is just a tutorial telling me how to use the targeting to uh, talk to things. I am going to, like I said, I am going to flounder a bit because it's going to take me a bit to remember how this game actually works. So we can check this creepy looking tree. Uh, what Tattle says here is actually quite important, so keep that in mind for later. Get a better look at it. Link, please. Close enough. So it's weird. It kind of looks like us and kind of looks like it's going to cry. That won't get 
That won't ever be fully explained, but uh, you'll be able to sort of intuit what's going on a little later once we actually get the other two masks. And we are now out of that weird whatever the heck that place was. We are in what looks like some kind of place with a wheel. Are you ready to meet your absolute favorite person in the world, Pi? I know you're just dying to meet him! <laughs> that, by the way, tends to be the, um, I'm not sure if I'd call them the arc words, but the most famous <laughs> line related to uh, Majora's Mask is what he just said there is, you have met with a terrible fate, haven't you? As we saw from the intro, that was that uh, spiked mask, which I'm just going to go ahead and tell you is Majora's Mask. So I don't have to constantly be coy about it. How did you follow us through that? Also, I think this dude has like a Mario mask on his bag. I'd have to, I'll have to actually check when I get control again. This is a very awkward camera angle. Also, yeah, this is actually not an emulator issue either. Those rapid movements that look like he just kind of screenshotted, that's how he moves naturally. It's kind of disconcerting. <laughs> so here's the first, uh, the first uh, mention of the time limit we've got. When we actually do get done with <coughs> the first cycle, I will address it a bit, a bit more. <laughs> but we have three days to find a way to get the ocarina back. Oh, camera! That was not helpful. Yeah, you can see the Mario mask right there. Yes, of course. Get the mask back as well. Because we're absolutely going to get the titular mask in the first, uh, first cycle. Also, yeah, this was also pop, um, associated with this game very closely is Dawn of the Whatever Day. The way it goes is Dawn of the First Day, Dawn of the Second Day, and Dawn of the Final Day, which, uh, you'll find out why. <laughs> Also, Toddle apparently feels the same as you, Pi. So the, there is actually, th I think, three things I need to do to uh, before the cycle ends, and I'm going to figure out how to do it. Because she thought the, the Happy Mask Salesman was creepy as well. <laughs> I usually act like he's creepy, so, uh... Anyways. So we need to talk to the Great Fairy. We're going to need to get access to something. And those are the two things I absolutely know we need to do before the, uh, thing ends. Also, those dogs will actually attack you in Deku Link form. They're mean. So this is an owl statue. It will actually be important later on. That dog got stuck in the loading zone. This is not the way I needed to go, but I need to come up here anyway, so it'll... It'll do. So the way out of this town is uh, through here. The guards will actually not let you through. Oh, we'll see! So yeah, he thinks you're a child and he will not actually let you out. 
So there's not really anything you can, uh... You technically can get out of the city uh, by doing a glitch, and if you do that, there's actually nothing loaded in the overworld. The, uh... Well, I mean, the overworld itself is loaded, but there's no monsters or anything. It's just a completely empty overworld, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's because he's armed. He has a sword and a shield. So the guard assumes that he's been taught um, combat and lets him through. But we're unarmed, so the guard thinks we're just teeny tiny little babies. You might notice that I am not going to the Great Fairy, as uh, Tuttle told me to, because there's something I need to do before I can do that. Uh, maybe I can't actually do that yet. Oh, I need to go over here. I think I'm doing this right. Uh, no. Okay, I have no idea how I'm supposed to do that, so we'll leave that for later. Let's go back down. Also, you can see that, uh, you can see the next area of Clock Town here. Um, when you go into the loading zone, that actually is on the map you initially see it on. Which, uh, doesn't really mean much right now. Um, but, it, well, it'll never mean much, but, uh, it's a completely separate area. People actually use this owl statue here to uh, glitch the game a lot because if you go here, you notice there's an owl statue right there. That's actually a completely separately loaded owl statue. Uh, where is the place I need to go? I have completely forgotten Clock Town's layout. Is it over here? Yeah, here's where I needed to go. Also, please speak uh, English. We don't really have any idea what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, this is good. I'm gonna be wandering for quite a bit. I'm trying to remember where I get to the things I need to get to. <laughs> also, I didn't mention it yet, but if you look down at the bottom, you see we have a, we actually have the timer there. It's almost noon of the first day. And yes, if I don't get this done on the first day, I just have to completely reset the game. <laughs> okay, it was up here. Maybe. Here's what I needed. So that's the thing right there. And I'm gonna show you one thing a Deku Link can do that normal Link can't. He skips on water. Which lets us actually pick this up. That's horrible. So this is actually a, um... That's actually a shard of the Great Fairy. Uh, every dungeon has a Great Fairy and they are broken into multiple shards. So you have to uh, find all of the shards of the Great Fairy and then turn it in. Which is a little more difficult than you might think. It's... Again, you'll see a little while... You'll see why a little later. So that we have the shard, we can actually come over here to the Great Fairy. Because if we had come here without that shard, we would have just found all of these in pieces over here. Also, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, that that is Tingle up on that balloon. I think this was Tingle's first introduction, but I do not recall. <laughs> and we have the amazing pointy boobs.
So yeah, Skull Kid basically tricked all the great fairies and broke them into pieces, which, uh... You can probably guess that's not really a good sign for our power versus his power. <laughs> We're gonna have to figure out a different way of dealing with this. So yeah, as a Deku Link, we actually shoot- oh, blasts. This means we can also now spin attack once we actually get our proper form back. Well, happy birthday. Let's see. You can see Tingle up there. We're not actually going to, uh... Am I too far away? I think I'm too far away. We're not actually going to get knock him down yet because we can't do anything with him. So we burst that, we talked to him. <laughs> and here's something I actually hate doing. We have to find all of these kids in hide and seek. And I don't remember where any of them are. Oh yeah, we have to do it before 6 a.m. So they're gonna go and hide. I know where one of them is, and he's over here. Luckily he's easy to catch if you're dashing. Like that. The others is where I don't remember where they are, so that's gonna be, uh, this one right here. I believe there's one over this way in Clock Town. So somebody's making Kukos unhappy somewhere. Ooh, didn't mean to didn't mean to hit the thing. I didn't mean to hit the uh hit the loading zone either. Did I? Oh no, the one that's jumping up and down there is not uh, one of the ones we need to hide and seek. That's actually a different kit entirely. Sorry, chicken! Please don't kill me! Okay, so that's three down. The question is, where are the others? That's actually the passageway to the, uh... Get away from me, dog. Would that be over here? Yes. There's a little snots. There's one. So we are on now night of the first day. The bummers gave us until uh, the morning, so we have until... Uh, I guess it's... Yeah, we have until I believe 6 a.m. to find them. So first we're going to talk to this dude. He really wants people to donate money for some reason. He is where I believe we get all of the uh, the wallet upgrades from. No, he give. Yeah, like he gives you your money back. <laughs> Oh, 
Also, he writes our total on our head. This is even funnier when you actually know ha what happens when the cycle ends. Pretty much. Okay, where is this last kid? I'm gonna check the laundry pool. Maybe he's down there. Where are you, you little brat? I got the one in West Clock Town. There's only one. Oh, so this dude's playing a familiar song, isn't he? Well, that door over there is locked, by the way. We can't actually get in there. Um, maybe there was one in West Clock Town I just didn't see. Let's find out. Get away from me, dog. The hilarious thing is that when you're in uh, normal link form, the dogs love you. <laughs> oh, what the? Didn't I catch you? Where'd he go? Where did he go? Oh, right, this is the one I hit the loading zone for. Gotcha! Alright, so here's the code. I'm gonna need your help remembering it, because God knows my memory's not any good. They're also racist little pricks. <laughs> This code, I believe, is randomized every game, so you can't just immediately go input it. And yes, this doesn't mean we're going to have to do this again with Link <laughs> to get the Bomber's Notebook. Two, one, four, three, five. So now I can actually go back to that part in Clock Town and use that way to uh, get where I need to go. It is two, one, four, five. I don't what? Uh, if you mean that I don't have to get the Bomber's Notebook, uh, you don't, actually. The Bomber's Notebook doesn't really do anything for you. It tells you some information, but it's not vital in, like, any... Oh. Link's gonna... Yep. After five bounces, you, uh, void out and go back to where you start. I thought I didn't give it to you as Deku Link. I can just go around you. Ha <laughs> ha, loser. There's another Majora balloon here for some reason. Not really sure why. Link, go up the Link, go up the ladder. Thank you. Also, you'll see me doing the spin a lot because it's actually quite- it's actually faster. This is the Scarecrow who was actually from uh, Ocarina of Time that would teach you the Scarecrow song. We can't do anything with him yet. Oh, cool! I didn't know that! I thought it re-randomized itself once you uh, became human Link. I didn't realize it didn't do that. This was not a good place to start the cutscene. Sure, let's go with that. Also, apparently Skull Kid gets around. <laughs> 
So let's take a look in the telescope. Let me move it around. to look here. And it's the horrifying moon with the pretty music. And it promptly cried a meteor at us. And he waggled his bum at us. float, so... Also, this is- yeah, this is actually a thing, um, you can only get to the clock tower in the final six hours of the cycle. Where is your door? Actually, it's probably upstairs. Um, yeah, you actually have to wait till the final six hours, and then the clock tower will open. We got a thing! Well, I think it's a neat, um, a neat touch. It doesn't mean we're going to be waiting for a couple of things later on. Oh, you'll see. You will see. Alright. So we have completed what we needed to do here. We needed that moon's tier. And that Skultilla, Skultilla surprised me. So I killed it. So let's see, if I remember correctly, now we need to go back to Central Clock Town first. Put that there. talk to him I want to spin spinning is faster so we come here and we trigger this and this guy shows up and dives into the flower also yeah this carnival this carnival thing they're talking about is I don't remember fully what it's called um, but it is what's going to be happening, um, essentially when the fourth day starts. Which, uh, well, that's not really going to be happening. And of course we need this flower, so we give him the moon's tear. Yes! And we get the land title deed. And we made his wife very happy. I love the fact that he didn't even really care. He just gave away his private property because he got something shiny and pretty for his wife. That's quite sweet. Yeah, you'll see why the run for your lives in a little bit. It's not quite clear yet what's, uh, what's happening. So yeah, with this, we can actually launch ourselves high and get up over here. That gets our first piece of heart, but that is also required to get up to the top of, uh, to the top of the clock tower.
So yeah, we can't actually go in there yet. This leaves us kind of unfortunate because unless you glitch your way out of the town, there's actually nothing that I'm aware of that you can that uh, you can really do. I could be entirely wrong. I just don't remember anything else you can do. So I need to find a specific spot. Is this it? Yes. So we need to come to the stockpot inn. Uh, oh no, this is not the stockpot inn. Also, yeah, this shrinking happens when uh, a new day is close to beginning. It's to give you a warning that you, uh, that you're running out of time in that day. So the dawn of the second day has come. So what does that mean? Well, you might notice the moon's gotten closer than it was before. I'm sure it means nothing though, right? This is not where I need to be. It's gonna do worse than that. This is also not where I need to be. Is it over here? No, this is actually where I came from. Uh, I'm looking for the, the bomb shop. Also, yeah, this place does have weather sometimes. back to east. Let me go through that other door. Yeah, considering the constant camera shifts, it's actually not easy for me to keep track of where I'm supposed to be. But yeah, since there's actually nothing we can do in this cycle, which I honestly found this kind of weird they didn't give you even remotely enough things to do, um, we have to do something else. Or we essentially have to skip the time. And we can do that with the Scarecrow. I think there's another way that you can skip time that's a little bit faster, but I'm not totally certain. This is the only one I actually know of. Also, you might recognize this song as well. So we are now on night of the second day. And we're going to dance till dawn. Ah, I thought there was something in the stockpot in. We're already here, so. We are now on dawn of the final day. Because I'm nice, I'm going to horrify you some more. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Also, this is actually a hint to something interesting, which, uh, I'll talk a bit- I'll talk about that a little bit later. Because he told- he just told us about two hidden songs. Also, you can hear the music has changed again. And the moon is even closer now! <laughs> So we're going to do the final skip, because you actually cannot skip to, uh, your death. You can only skip to dawn of the final day with Granny, and you can only skip till night of the final day with the Scarecrow. So we will have to do- I think we will have to do uh, a little bit of waiting still. Yeah, if you- when he says that, he, uh... He just gets out of town. <laughs> so 
we are now on night of the- if I can get to the door. We are now on night of the final day. And, uh... You can hear that it's a lot more grim, and one thing you can t you can figure out if you look around everywhere is that as the days progress, uh, there is le there are less and less people in Clock Town. So you come over here, you might remember there was a ton of people moving around here. This dude is the only one that's left. Do I need to look up at the moon again? <laughs> This, by the way, is why we needed the, uh... The, um, Deku thing. Yeah, the moon is right there. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and park us up there. Unfortunately, on this first cycle, there is really nothing I can do but just wait. Also, yes, um... I don't know if it's entirely in the final day or if it only starts in the night of the final day, but there are now earthquakes and uh, aftershocks that's going through the world. So yeah, we just gotta wait. <laughs> Not really a whole lot we can do. We have to wait until it hits, uh, what was it, midnight, I believe? Yeah, there, you can see, you can see the, the quake is shaking the whole place. trying to look at something here. I believe all of the shops closed down as well. The Stockpot Inn is closed. The, um, the little minigame shops are closed. Basically everything closes down once the uh, final day starts. Or if not starts, uh, night. by the time of the night of the final day it is definitely all closed. But I believe it's even closed on the final day. At least a couple of them are. Almost there. Also, yes, you might notice that time is moving quite quickly. And it might seem like it's moving a little too quickly for us to actually get anything uh, done. Though I did skip some of the time. But, uh... There's... We'll be dealing with that. Also, you might also notice around the final gym there, that little spark that's going around. That's actually a... A clock. It's, a, it's indicating, um when the hour is going to pass. Oh, because the time was so quickly? The time was passing so quickly or because you didn't know what to do or because you couldn't you couldn't figure out how to pass the time or So now it should cut scene us. Yeah, generally you need to get get them um get the flower access and get magic power. That's all you really are intended to do on the first cycle, and I don't know why. Yeah, don't worry, there's... Uh, I'll address the time actually moving shortly. And just to make you panic even more... When it loads me back in... You get a timer down there! Counting down the last six hours. And here's a familiar little twit. And there's Tail. Tattle apparently doesn't like the mask very much. Uh. And Tail has apparently just immediately been possessed. Um, I, I think it's that some... Something, I don't know if it's the... The instruction manual or whatever. Something actually says that Tail has visions. And also Skull Kid just slapped the poor fairy. And Tal is very angry.
and Skull Kid uh, makes the moon start moving faster. So when you come up to this point, you have got five minutes to do something, which is a little strange because you really shouldn't need five minutes. I'll pick this up. And we get a vision. A very blurry vision. Also, yeah, the reason she's saying she feels like it is because, uh... Slight awkward of time spoilers, but at the end of that game, Link's get sent the Link gets sent back to his actual timeline uh, when he was a child, and the timeline splits. So Zelda is sort of remembering some stuff her adult self did, even though that's in a separate timeline. It it's kind of confusing. <laughs> And here should be a very familiar song. You remember the Song of Time? Missility linking around the edge of your mind is a song of memories of Princess Zelda. The goddess of time is protecting you. If you play the song of time, she will aid you. Also, I don't know where the goddess of time fits with the, the Triforce trio. It's never really expanded on. I think she's just a lesser goddess. And Tattle is very upset. And for good reason. Took a second to kick back in there, music. So that is your hint. And here is the reason why... Here is part one of why uh, the time limit is not actually all that bad. It's because... First of all, time pauses when you go into the ocarina. Second of all, if you play the Song of Time, you immediately return to Dawn of the First Day. Even if you only have one second left on Dawn of the Final- or on uh, Night of the Final Day, if you play the song, you will immediately go back to Dawn of the First Day. Also, you might notice we lost all of our consumables in that. Any kind of- yeah, any kind of consumable, like rupees or Deku sticks or Deku nuts, you actually lose when you reset. But that's why the- so this is what we mean- No! The, dis the deposited ones are safe! That's what Maverick meant by bank fraud! <laughs> but yeah, so this is why the time limit in this game is not as restrictive as it looks. Um, when you return to Dawn on the first day, a lot of stuff you did gets undone. Dungeons get unbeaten. Um, the fairies get un uh, unsaved, things like that. But everything you gain from it, you keep. So, like, uh... Well, while, while you might have to complete... While you uh, will have to kill the bosses again, um, when you reset the cycle, uh, if you've completed the dungeon, the dungeon stays completed. You can just immediately teleport to the boss. And, like, any masks you gain, you keep forever. Things like that. So generally, the the pace, the thing about this game is that you need to use every, you need to make a little more progress in one cycle than you did in the last cycle. Any kind of progress you make is saved. 
so as long as you uh, you continue to do stuff and continue to get further and further, you will continue to progress with the game. You have an unlimited number of cycles. The only time the time limit uh, kicks in is um, when you're doing the cycle itself. You can only work three days at a time before you have to reset. But you have as, as many three-day cycles as you need to beat the game. So we got our instrument back, so let's talk to him. And he's shaking our shoulders. Please stop! So here is what I would consider um, Majora's, Mask, Majora's, Ma Majora's Mask's iconic song. Just as the uh, Song of Time was iconic for Ocarina of Time? I believe this is iconic for uh, Majora's Mask. This is... The Song of Healing. So, uh, uh, while this plays, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the instrument. Um, every one of Link's forms, because the Deku form is not the only form we're going to be playing with, uh, essentially interprets the ocarina differently. Each time you are in a form, um, the ocarina will turn into a different instrument. So you saw the Deku got some kind of like weird giant tuba pipe thing? Link himself will keep the ocarina, and then the other two get a guitar and a drum set. I will not say what they are or who gets what, though. That said, keep in mind what he is saying here, because this is actually quite important. Also, uh, I'd brace yourself, Pi. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this game revolves around... Link and the three transformation masks. There will be a lot of things only uh, a specific form can do, and there is actually one whole dungeon which requires you to rapidly shift between forms. <laughs> but I can take it on and put it off at will. And here's where you need to brace yourself, because uh, this is not going to be nice. Yeah, about your mask. Nope, we sure didn't. And now he's throttling us. I warned you to brace yourself! <laughs> Also, we get some backstory. It's also creepy as all shit. This is this is the game that gave people nightmares about the happy mask salesman. <laughs> Also, the shadow part makes me think it was uh, this ver this world's version of uh, the Sheikah. And yes, I did say this world. We are actually in a parallel world. We are not in Hyrule. Uh, this world we are in is called Termina. Um, and it, that was actually for a really long time mistaken to mean Terminal. Because uh, if you, if you uh, fail the three-day cycle, yeah, moon crashes into the world, everybody dies. <laughs> um... But uh, apparently somebody asked Miyamoto about it, and he meant it to mean terminal as in, like, a bus terminal. A central area you traveled through, not terminal as in deadly. Also, if you knew this bus was so dangerous, why did you get it, you twit? Although I will say this, you might have noticed something kind of unfortunate when I played the Song of Time. 
You can actually only hard save in the game by resetting the cycle. You can do suspended saves via the owl statues, but those are the type of saves that once you load the save, it will immediately delete the save. <laughs> like, you can save the statue, but it will uh, terminate your game, and then when you reload it, the file will be erased. You have to reset the cycle to hard save. Which is unfortunate, but... Again, as long as you are doing something to progress... Um, it's not too bad. And it's actually sometimes a good idea to just toss the rest of your cycle if you've done something you really want to make sure you keep saved, like finishing a dungeon. So those are actually going to be our four locations uh, for the main dungeons in the game. Well, that's something we're going to find out. So since I'm now normal Link, the dog likes me. <laughs> also, hello! That's a weird little kid, isn't he? Not really our business if he wants to mail stuff. So if we talk to the guard now, he will actually try to stop us. But then he will notice that we are armed. Considering this is a medieval world, basically anybody who is trained in self-defense uh, is considered an adult. So yeah, welcome to Termina Field. I thought the dog followed you around as normal length, but I guess not. So this is what we've got to work with so far. So I actually can rotate the control stick quickly to, uh... There we go. That was the button to guard. I forgot what button it was briefly. Before I go running off for that, I should actually probably go get the, uh... Go get the bomber's notebook. It's mostly just for completionist's sake, because you don't need it for anything unless you're doing all the side quests. Oh, is the, um... Is the mountain one the one it's scared of? Pretty sure the mountain one is the one it's actually scared of. The ocean one is actually my favorite of the transformation masks, but uh, that's unfortunately going to take a while before we can get there. All right, so what was the uh, what was the code? It was two one something five. Two one three four five was it? Two one four three five. That was close. Also, you lied to me. I didn't get the bomber's notebook from that. <laughs> okay. So let's see if I can actually get. There's a thing I need over that way, but I don't know if I can actually get it right now. Go in? Oh. Whoa, I made myself dizzy there with the camera for a second. That did nothing. You lied to me. <laughs> Okay, but actually there is a... Uh, I actually need to check real quick because I already forgot what the song of time is. So 
So he mentioned, you might remember the Scarecrow mentioned a couple of things. Uh, one of the things he mentioned was if you play it um, twice, you skip time. If you play, uh, like, uh, if it's right, right, A, A, down, down, you will skip to the next uh, six, whether 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. If you play it backwards is what we want to do. So I need to play down, A, right, down, A, right. This is called the Inverted Song of Time, which slows the flow of time. That actually doubles the amount of time per cycle you have. This does mean that it also affects all of the NPCs. So the NPCs who are just leisurely walking normally to do all the routines will now, like, walk in very slow motion. So screw you, stupid spider. Huh, I thought there was something I could get, I could get here. Yeah, like I said, it's been a very long time since I've played this game, so there's going to be a lot of, uh, floundering, so, uh, I will probably check with Maverick here and there to get. Oh, hey, you were right! Also, you can see that Link is older because he's actually way taller than these guys as well. Yay! I'm a member of the Bombers! So this is actually mostly used for schedule tracking because this game... Yeah, uh, you, you heard me mention uh, NPCs moving around before. This game has... Uh, schedules for every single character for every single part of the day. Which is pretty vital um, for what you need to do, because you're gonna have to actually uh, you're gonna have to actually uh, figure out where, p where certain people are. I know what I need to do. Kid move, I wanna read the sign. Toddle, help me. Thank you. This is just more stuff. That's mostly just tutorial things, so let's see. I need to figure out where the chicken is. Which is actually a very good question. There's one thing we're gonna do real quick though. So we're gonna talk to uh, Anju here. Did I wait till Did I wait till too long to talk to her? Also, yeah, here's the granny you can actually skip time with. There's actually if you stay you need a mask to get a heart piece from her. But uh, you need a mask to do thing is going to be a very big running theme in this game because masks are kind of this game's thing. Let's see, they have a little river just running right through here. Hello! How are you, Panda? Okay. 
That, that's something we can't do yet because we don't have, uh... Actually, maybe we can't do this one yet. The shooting center we can't. We don't have the bow yet. Hunting and Darling, uh, have you something different every every day, though? <laughs> oh, so they are constantly putting their hands all over each other. <laughs> okay. We're probably not going to be able to do actually anything here in uh, Clock Town. We just started. We're in the second cycle. I'm just trying to remember what all I have available to me right now. We are probably going to have to actually go to the swamp and do some stuff there before, uh, before we can actually make any sort of meaningful progress anywhere else. So that right there, the path down there, that's actually an important path. Um, down that path is where we find Epona, but it is completely inaccessible right now. Which is very unfortunate because Epona is wonderful and I love her. Oof. That did not go how I wanted that to go. I'll see you come over here. You get a cutscene. Uh, multiple times, but it's been quite a while. Like, I've beaten this game- this was one of my childhood games, I beat it a lot. It's just been a very long time. So I, I'm kind of floundering, remembering where things are. As far as I'm aware, this is actually an optional cutscene. If you don't come close enough, it will never play. This is- uh, I will, uh, reassure you that this is not going to be a thing of, like, I'm spending an hour and a half just wandering, figuring out what to do. If I feel like I really don't know what I'm doing, um, Maverick is going to t give me a hint on where I need to go next. Because I do like figuring games on my own, but one thing that always really, really irritated me about uh, Let's Players and streamers was when they would spend a half an hour to an hour or more just wandering in circles because they clearly didn't know what to do. <laughs> So a lot of LPers don't actually cut that out. Also, we have poor shivering little fairies. The poor shivering little skull kid. So they're all trying to shiver together. So they're a little bit warmer. I actually really like this cutscene because it's adorable to me. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what's up with the bird beak. I think it's just like a little clip on thing. That, uh, he can wear. Oh, there's actually a layering issue. Hold on really quick. I sh yeah, I should have figured that was going to happen. Okay, there we go. I apologize for that. I did not realize there was going to be a layering issue there. Yeah, when I want advice, I will ask for advice. But like, if I've done if I've done something and you and you say something like, "Hey, there's actually uh, an easier way to do that," that's generally okay. Like, if I spend ten minutes climbing in circles around a rock and there and you can just go like, "There was actually a path directly to the east of you that went right up," that sort of thing is okay. <laughs> but n just know that I don't use glitches or anything. Though I don't know why I was saying that because he said he was gonna be right back. <laughs> Maybe this isn't optional. I think this is the way to the swamp. I always see speed. I always see speedrunner skip it, so that's why I always think it's optional. Bats. Actually, I think 
think this is maybe this is the way to Epona. Also, I'm ignoring Tingle still because uh still can't do anything with him yet. Alright, here is the swamp. Actually, while I don't like Tingle himself, he is very, very useful in this game. I just can't do anything with him yet. Also, I think I forgot to hit the owl statue in Clock Town. Whoops. I'll just have to fix that later. So you see, when you hit, the, when you hit an owl statue with their sword, it activates, which, uh... Doesn't really mean anything to us right now, but it will mean a lot to us later on. So the spin attack, like rotating the control stick to make the spin attack work is a little fiddly. You're betting on teleport? I can give him Oh, that's right. You have to regain the deed every uh, every cycle. Forgot about that. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So the boat cruise is closed. I'll come back. Also, this is apparently Tingle's dad. I forgot you had to reacquire the deed every time. Honestly, the way it does that is to avoid you getting soft locked, because you can't get up to the clock tower without that flower. But if you trade the deed to that dude, you can no longer use that flower. He just telling us photographs, free boat cruise. Blah blah blah. Basically more stuff we can't do. <laughs> Alright, so So as you can see, these are actually lily pads that leave further into water. We can't do anything with them. And now comes the reason I thought that the uh, Deku transformation would be horrifying. Pie. I hope you're ready. It's not as bad with the Deku scrub, but oh, wait till we get the other ones. Every single mask plays an animation like that. Oh, so yeah, I can just take it back off, go back to Link, so I now have free- I now have free movement. Yep. The first time that you do it, uh, you actually- You, uh, cannot skip it. Um, speedrunners, of course, did find a slight glitch to sort of modify that, but I want you to see the horrifying thing, so we're not going to be doing that. Also, Swamp Tourist Center just sounds bad. Oh, also, I will say that while anything you have to do deal in peace with NPCs is entirely reliant on the clock, things like dungeons literally don't matter. They don't care what the time on the clock is. Also, this lady should look a little familiar to you.
Also, their names should be a bit familiar as well. Kotoke and, Ko and Koame. I think those are their names. They're close to their names. This is the forest. Yep. Who are ferocious turtles? I should technically say beware Gamera, but uh... So here's the monkey. He's gonna be kind of a crap. He's gonna be kind of a shit. Also, this is basically Lost Woods 2.0. If I, uh, go in the wrong direction at any point, uh, I will completely go back to the start. It is exactly as awful as it sounds. Thankfully, it's not too long. The main problem is we have to do this twice. I unfortunately do not, but we do have to actually talk to her to do anything. But yeah, you recognize these old witches, Pi? So talk to her again. Tell her about her sister. Would you recognize them? Would you recognize them easier if I told you that uh, combined their name is Twin Rova? Because yeah, these are the two uh, witch sisters that uh, were you dealt with in the spirit temple. And we have our first bottle. Because she just said to bring the potion to her sister. She didn't say we had to uh, give the bottle over. But yeah, Kome and Kotoke were uh, the two twins that raised Ganondorf and combined it into Enrova. Who creepily flirted with Link when she uh, appeared. <laughs> Twin Rova was the... the, um... Essentially the rhythm boss. She was the one where you had to use the mirror shield to absorb three instances of uh, fire or three instances of ice and hit her with it. Maybe I just remember Twin Roma because she was a pain in the fucking ass for me. <laughs> also, she keeps calling herself a sorry old hag, which, uh... Seems an interesting descriptor. Anyways, give her the potion. You know, suddenly got very spry for, uh... For a second there. And then he's just like, give me the potion, give me the bottle back. <laughs> just hold his hand out like, bottle, come on, give me the bottle. <laughs> so that we've saved your sister, we can actually, uh, oh, hello. Buy stuff from, uh, Kotoke. This is even more of a shithole than apparently it normally is. So we're gonna go to a palace. Also, I like that Link is slightly seizuring here because of the way the monkeys are moving. No, 
now we need to go back to the boat tour area. Which, uh... Do you have to actually do that? Hey, for some reason, this area isn't actually poisoned. So Link can just swim perfectly fine. Look, he tries his best. It's not his fault he's half blind. So now we can speak to Kome. And we get a picture box. Much like the bomber's no the bomber's notebook, it's not really vital for anything. The notebook is mostly good for tracking people, but you don't really get anything for doing the picto box as far as I'm aware. I might be wrong. Let's take pickers. Also, no, it's zoomed in t to make it feel like Link sitting, but the way he shuffles is kind of odd. Yeah, this is just what the picture box looks like. You can't actually zoom or anything. Frog. I don't use the picto box because it takes so long I actually thought the game crashed for a second <laughs> and we just hop off onto the deck of palace and monkey tries to lead us in. I really like the Deku Palace music. So there's actually something we need to, you might notice that there's a lily pads that way. There is something we need to uh, go that way to get, but we can't actually get it yet. We have to actually, um, complete the Deku Palace before we can get it. There's something over this way we can get. Also, I kind of question how lily pads are staying up in poison water. Am I the one who finds that kind of weird? So I hear something we uh, want to get. But that actually leads towards the first dungeon, so we don't want to quite go this way just yet. We still got some business in the palace. Yeah, if you actually tried to talk to them as Link, they'd just tell you to get lost. So this appears to be the, uh, the monkey brother that uh, the others lost. And apparently the princess is missing. That's not good. Yeah, we can't actually do anything with him right now. Also, we have the Deku King and the Deku Butler. That butler has the most amazing grass mustache. Also, I just realized this dude has leaves in an uncomfortable place.
Yeah, this is the butler. He's a neat dude. So I, I kind of like the weird, like, tree buns he's got. So yeah, we're not gonna go- we're not gonna be able to do anything doing this, uh, going legitimately here. We're gonna have to sneak in. Hi, hey, monkey. You can climb. So yeah, we need to actually go to the find where the bean seller is, buy a bean, and then uh plant it. Luckily, unlike Ocarina of Time, we don't actually have to uh water the things. Also, this is Hyrule Castle all over again. You have to avoid being seen. They spread rupees fairly uh, thickly around here, considering you're going to need them. Yep! If you uh, wait until night to come here, their lines of sight will actually be visible, which is uh, quite helpful if you're having trouble. I believe their lines of sights are a cone. but I got a shiny. Also, these ferns block, uh, block their side of you. Ooh, no. Oh, they're straight lines. I thought they were cones. is the wrong way to go. We need to enter from the other side. Dick you just have literal tunnel vision, I guess. Also, no peripheral vision either. Well, I got the heart piece at least. I didn't mean to break that. This looks more like where I need to go. lines sure makes it easier to dodge around them. Okay, so there's where we need to go. That little grotto there. Also, yes, I apologize to all Zelda fans, but this is where the Pixel Box originated. So that mess in Wind Waker is this game's fault. Whee! 
There we go. Also, fun fact about uh, about this game that people only found it a little later: all of the grottos are loaded on the same map. So if you can actually get out of bounds in one grotto, you can get to another grotto. It's kind of interesting. Also, hi. Uh... Well, maybe you shouldn't put yourself underneath the garden of a very exclusionary palace. Uh... Mm. I guess you have to water them. Go ahead and grab a spare. I don't actually know if I'm gonna need the spare, but uh, I feel better grabbing it. Oh, come on. Hey, right, first I want to test something. Oh, so yeah, all of Link's forms can use bottles. They weren't that mean. So butterflies. And grass texture if I tilt too high. So usually doing this got you something in Ocarina of Time, so let's see if it doesn't if it gets us anything now. I made a sound. Sweet, got us rupees. <laughs> Get the water, Link. Thank you. Okay, so I need to figure out where I actually need to plant this thing. Oh, you weren't kidding when you said those were straight lines. I really hate how the camera bugs out of bounds. Okay. That's the shrine, not the outer garden. Um, uh, mm, this is a problem. They pop back up when you walk out. That's kind of strange. Okay, is this the outer garden? Okay, um. Almost too far apart for Link to hit. Not quite too far apart, but almost. Yeah, take that! So we need to... Take this off. Plant this. Water it. And now we can use it. Because watering a bean makes it float normally. Don't, I mean, don't all yours do that?
Oof. I thought I could do that in a neat way, but uh, not happening. Okay, so we'll do that the way that it kind of intends you to do that then. See if I can do this a bit better. So now that the first day has finally hit, you can see how much slower the time runs when you uh, invert, when you play the song of inverted time. So yes, this is as annoying to aim as it looked like it is. Wait for it to go back around. You can't actually hit these things with the Deku Nuts from above. It's just really hard. Yeah, th yeah. They kind of do. Part of it is the fact that I'm moving, so my aim is already kind of off by the fact that I'm being uh, rotated. But it is also part is it is also in part it is actually very difficult to uh, figure out where Deku Link's uh, shots are actually gonna go. Luckily, they also have a pretty big hitbox, so, uh... There is that! What? No! Game! I'm gonna have to start this all over, aren't I? Oh, thank god! Got it. Yeah, it really is. I actually don't like Deku Link's uh, thing very well. It's not too awful bad, but it's not my favorite. But I personally think the mountain one, the mountain one is actually quite worse. But we made it! Woohoo! Now we can talk to the monkey. So he's mad, nobody's paying any attention to him, so. We can actually solve that by doing this. Yeah, the Dooku, the Dooku uh, instrument is the Dooku pipes. He's gonna do something kind of important. Yep, we're kind of used to it by now. I'll sing it softly for you to for you to play on your giant pipes. 
that will surely make them not hear us. Right? So yeah, the first uh, dungeon song is the Sonata of Awakening. The interesting thing about songs like this is that you hear the, uh... You hear, um, the instrument of the form you're playing first, then you hear the ocarina, and then they play together, which is actually quite- which is actually quite neat. I don't actually recall why it has that flavor text. I don't remember waking up anything that needs waking up. And we get unceremoniously picked up and thrown out. You're already gonna get punched by the Deku King, dude. Unless he just spontaneously decides to delay it for like two days. This is the way I was going to go earlier when I realized I should probably pick up what I needed from the, uh... From the Deku, uh... Palace first. Oh shoot, am I gonna make it? Not quite. Please break the Z-targeting. Oh, good grief. Uh, okay, where are the lily pads? There are lily pads this way. Where is this? Oh, this put me on the outside of the swamp. Okay. So I need to do that again. I will say that Deku Link doesn't control anywhere near as badly as it- Oops. That was my bad. Deku Link doesn't control anywhere near as badly as it looks like he controls. I'm just trying to relearn how, uh, how it works. Most of this game actually controls quite well. Then again, Ocarina of Time actually, uh... Controlled quite well as, quite well as well. Oh, these guys are a pain in the butt. I actually have no way to do any sort of ranged, uh, ranged attack with Link normally right now. Well, these things are electric. Nasty. Get out of here. Very rude. I hate these things a lot. They're nasty, nasty little things. And that right there is what we want to get to. Because this is going to give us uh, the most important song. And you might have noticed something up on top of that. This is a familiar dude, ain't it? And he recognizes us despite us being in Deku form. Destined to fade anyway, huh? He's talking about the moon falling, I believe. I 
it's not actually explained if this is the same uh, Kapora Gabora that is actually in Ocarina of Time. Because he acts like he doesn't know you, but at the same time, uh... He's pretty distinct. He's also less wordy this time. This is going to be one of the songs you're going to be seeing me use the most in the game, most likely. This is the Song of Soaring. And uh, you actually called it correctly, Pi. The Song of Soaring is a teleport song. Any of those owl statues we've activated by hitting them, we can teleport straight to them with the Song of Soaring. Unfortunately, I'm almost certain I didn't hit the one in Clock Town, so uh, I might have to just walk my butt back there, because I'm not giving up 94 rupees. We've got something to hit before we do that. Okay, that was a little close. Right. It actually will not let you take the masks off the C button if uh, you are currently transformed. And I didn't mean to fall there. Whoops. Killed the thing though, so that's really all that matters. And yeah, that's basically it. It's the teleport thing is to uh, make you spend the time to walk there on the first time you go there, but let you teleport immediately there so you're not wasting uh, some of Link's very, very sparse time. I already forgot what the Sonata of Awakening actually was. So you actually have to take this off and hit it with the, the sword. Let's see. Screw it, I'm just gonna look it up. I can't remember for crap. Upright, upright, A, left, A. Okay. Up, right, up, left, up, left, A, right, A. Got the directions a little mixed up there. Ta-da! Dungeon! Down right up, down left up, down left up. So yeah, you can do down. It's a little fiddly with the controller I'm using. So if I use Song of Soaring, it brings up this and it lets me pick a place to go. And when I pick it, you're teleported immediately to where it is. Yeah, it's really strange. I did that with the ocarina as well. I don't know why. So 
That is a wolf host behind me, I'm pretty sure. The one right there as well. I ain't got time for you, buddy. I'm busy. Go find somebody who cares! I see you have the bubbles uh, spawn here as well, which is that skull and the aura. Didn't take that off. So first things first. Activate this thing. So I can now work back to Clock Town at any point I need. And go over here and talk to this dude and commit bank fraud! And yep, see, he remembers just by the stamp on your forehead. We're gonna deposit all the rupees we got. Because, uh... We are gonna reset the cycle. It's very early in the cycle to reset, but um, I kind of want to cut the stream here. So we are going, like I said, the only way you can hard save is to uh, play the Song of Time. So you play the Song of Time, it returns you to dawn of the first day, it resets everything that's happened in the world. But you keep your items, your learned songs, stuff like that. So we still have the Sonata of Awakening, which means we can uh, immediately jump into the dungeon on dawn of the first day. And uh, the next time we come back, that is exactly what we'll be doing.